Hi, my name's Rachel Pateman. I work at the Stockholm Environment Institute based at the University of York in the UK. I wanted to offer some reflections on co-creator citizen science from a synthesis we've recently carried out across a range of citizen science projects. The aim of this synthesis was to understand how citizen science currently or could potentially contribute to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. We looked across a range of projects to understand how they could contribute to monitoring, defining and achieving the Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs. Our focus was on projects in cities in low and middle income countries, as these have been described as the locations in which the fight for sustainability will be won or lost. The SDGs have a dedicated goal focused on tackling sustainability in urban environments, which aims to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. This recognises the pressures on man-made and natural systems that come from rapidly growing populations, but also that cities have the potential to be where critical successes for sustainability can be achieved. We search the academic and the grey literature for current and past projects in these locations, and use these to understand how citizen science approaches are currently being used in these contexts. We extracted information from the resources we found relating to these projects about successes and challenges faced when using citizen science approaches. This was complemented by a series of interviews with representatives of projects taking, taking place in these contexts. And we asked these representatives to discuss what had worked well, as well as lessons learned from running projects. The synthesis identified a wide range of opportunities for co-created projects to contribute in particular to achieving the SDGs, for example, through taking action on particular issues, involving citizens in decision making, or through the knowledge or skills that participants gain. But some key reflections also emerged which need to be considered in the design of such projects. The first relate to initial engagement with communities. While it's not always the case for co-creator projects, in some circumstances, researchers or practitioners may seek out communities to work with, and this requires careful planning. For example, it can be tempting to work with communities whose leaders are most engaged and approachable and have been involved in similar projects before, but these may not be the best communities suited to a particular project. In addition, considerable time and resources are needed to engage communities. This includes investing time in understanding local cultures, building trust and being sensitive to a community's experiences. Many projects we identified emphasised the value of building a project team, including local stakeholders, such as local universities, non-governmental and civil society organisations and community leaders. Finding the right local partner was seen to unlock community involvement so that scientists or practitioners are not seen as external actors going in and telling people what to do. In the design phase of a project, co-designing methods and materials with participants was seen as valuable to ensure that they are, are appropriate for the participants' circumstances. Co-creation of methodologies, methodologies ensures participation can sit alongside existing daily activities and not overburden participants. This is particularly important when working with people in resource poor settings. Some projects highlighted the tension that can arise from maintaining data quality standards and ensuring communities are given ownership of projects. Co-creating methodologies and field guides with participants can help to overcome this. Some projects have structured their co-design processes to be iterative and circular so that those involved can learn these best practices by participating in them. It's important the co-design process includes all members of a community, as they may have varying needs and priorities. For example, while digitisation can increase inclusion of some groups, others may feel excluded to a perceived lack of skills. Challenges were also identified in involving women because they have many responsibilities and a high workload. Illiteracy can also potentially lead to exclusion of some. While examples exist where co-designers overcome all of these issues, it is also recognised that this requires a significant investment of time. When it comes to the implementation phase of a project, sufficient time is also needed for training participants in data collection methods, particularly if they are unfamiliar to participants. Resources may also be needed for participants connecting to the internet, for example, to download apps or upload data. Projects should carefully consider how they can engage citizens in all stages of the research process, 
including data analysis and dissemination. This gives participants ad additional skills, as well as encourage greater ownership of a project. Finally, outcomes of projects need to be carefully considered. While co-creation can ensure that community priorities are at the forefront of projects, there is a need to be honest with participants and set expectations, especially in low, in low income areas. Participants might expect that when a project focuses on a particular issue, combined efforts will result in a large change, but often this is not the case. Researchers need to be clear with participants about expected impacts, as well as accept that people may not want to participate in a project that they feel will not, will not result in a concrete change for them. In some cases, participants are compensated financially for their involvement if it takes time away from time that could be used to earn a living. If project outcomes are not clear or tangible, this could lead to people only participating for a financial reward. This can be addressed at least in part by allowing sufficient time and resources at the start of a project to engage stakeholders who will use data or other outcomes from projects so that citizens can see action from their efforts. It may be possible to bring local authorities and communities together to come up with shared priorities at the start of a project, although this depends on the local context and nature of relationships. Thank you for listening to these reflections and I look forward to hearing yours on what makes a co-created system science project work.